Hey, everybody, and welcome uh, to our last weekend in our series called The Way. Now, uh, a few things before we dive into the message. Um, as you guys know, I've been talking about the reopening of hope and, and just a few things um, about that June 21st weekend. We're calling that a test weekend, okay? And what I mean by that is we're gonna see how it goes. We're gonna see how we do. In other words, with cleaning, because we're cleaning between services, every seat on every campus will be sanitized between services, doors, uh, handles, you know, stuff like that. So we're calling it a test weekend and we'll evaluate after the services and see, hey, do we wanna to continue to keep open or do we wanna wait a while and do maybe another one in July and so forth? So uh, I'm, I'm talking with churches around the area, some of my very good friends, larger churches, and we're just all discussing, hey, what, 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 what should we do? So I'm just letting you know that it's a test weekend. I'll send you more details on that in e-newses. So be looking. I know some of you don't read those, those e-news that I send out, so shame on you. And I'll pray that you actually go to heaven uh, for not doing that. But uh, today, very excited about today, we close the message series called The Way. And this has been a series on the book of Acts. And last week, Pastor Eric did a great job, great job at, at outlining um, the missional worldview. But before I, I, I talk about what he talked about, let me give you a review of the way, just a, just a, a real 30,000 foot view. The way review, the book of Acts, powerful relationship. Okay, so we talked about that the book of Acts introduces our New Testament, the new season of time called grace of the church, it, it instituted this powerful relationship through the power of the Holy Spirit, Acts 2. So there is a definite distinction between the Old Testament, even in the Gospels, to what we have in the book of Acts. It begins this powerful relationship with God, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Then we talked about missional worldview. We talked about the importance of how we see the world and that our worlds are aligned, our lives, maybe should I say, are aligned with God's mission. And then last week, Eric started challenging lifestyle. And in that challenging lifestyle, let me give you the formula that Eric gave. You ready? It was this, powerful relationship plus missional worldview equals a challenging lifestyle. I mean, that's the bottom line. The, the book of Acts describes the pattern of the way just like this. That means to follow Jesus, to make disciples of all nations, it would prove to be a lifestyle that would be challenging. And let me just put on the screen just a few things that challenge them. Persecution. I mean, it was rampant. I mean, they were persecuted almost their whole lives. The next one, imprisonment. Many of them were thrown in prison many times. They were abused. Paul was beaten uh, many times with whips or with clubs, in prison, so forth. The next one, trials. There were so many trials that, that went on in, in their lives because of the way they lived, because of the challenges and even death, they would face all of these because of their mission, because of their powerful relationship with Jesus. So powerful relationship plus missional worldview is possibly going to equal, now who wants to sign up, right? I mean, this is, this is kind of what it equaled in the book of Acts. Now today, as, as I conclude this series, I wanna finish up this second week of challenging lifestyle and talk about it in a different way. And that is this, the challenges that we produce on our own, okay? And then we blame God for. <laughs> Does that make sense? So we make decisions poor 
unwise decisions. Uh, and then they throw us into this world of chaos, this challenge in our lives, a trial, if you will. And then we back up and go, God, why did you allow this? Why did you let this happen to me? Why did this happen to me? I don't understand. And we blame God for the challenges when in fact, he had nothing to do with these challenges. So this week, I wanna talk about the trials that we're facing because of our, not because of our faith, not, not because that we're following Jesus or a mission, but talk about the challenges that we bring upon ourselves. And I wanna give you a few examples in the book of Acts that, um, that we're gonna look at as far as how we create our own challenges. And there are two of them that I'm gonna list today. Number one, the challenges that we create in our relationship with God. And number two, the challenges that we create in our relationship with others. So again, you know, the greatest commandment, love God, love others, love your neighbor. Well, these are challenges that we produce in and of ourselves because of our decisions, because of what we decide to do, because we decide to rebel, because we decide to, um, you know, do what we want to do. Well, there's there are consequences to that, right? So those are the challenges that I want to talk about today. And there are two examples. And this first one, the challenges that we create in our relationship with God is found in Acts chapter five. Now, this is not a story that uh, I'll be honest, that I really like to teach on or preach on or you know, talk about really, because it's a really crazy story, but it's, in, it's found in Acts five, verse one. And I want you to pay attention to what's going on here. Acts five, one. But there was a certain man named Ananias who with his wife, Sapphira, sold some property. He brought part of the money to the apostles claiming it was the full amount. With his wife's consent, he kept the rest. Then Peter said, Ananias, why have you let Satan fill your heart? You lied to the Holy Spirit and you kept some of the money for yourself. The property, listen to this. The property was yours to sell or not sell as you wished. And after selling it, the money was also yours to give away. How could you do a thing like this? You weren't lying. You weren't lying to us, but to God. And as soon as Ananias heard these words, he fell to the floor and died. Rest of the story. Everyone who heard about it was terrified, of course, right? Then some young men got up, wrapped him in a, in a sheet and took him out and buried him. About three hours later, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter asked her, was the price you and your husband received was, was the price you and your husband received for your land? Yes, she re was this the price? Sorry, I knew that was wrong. Yes, she replied, that was the price. And Peter said, how could the two of you even think of conspiring to test the spirit of the Lord like this? The young men who buried your husband are just outside the door and they will carry you out too. Instantly, she fell to the floor and died. When the young men came in and saw that she was dead, they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Listen to this, verse 11. Great fear gripped the entire church and everyone else who heard what had happened. Crazy, crazy story, right? What do we learn? What do we learn? First, our word matters to God. Peter says to them, Guys, this was your property to sell. It was your property to get the money. You could have kept the money. You could have given away the money. But what you did was you came and lied to the Holy Spirit. You lied to God, trying to make yourself look better than, than what you really are. And they died. This, this is, this is uh, and I know this is a hard story, right? Because this is New Testament. This is not Old Testament. This is not like Genesis or, or Joshua and the battles or the, the crazy death stuff that happened. In the, no, 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 no. This is New Testament. This is Jesus died, rose from the grave, ascended to heaven. Church has started. Chapter five of Acts. This is early on in the church. And man, 
we learn some powerful lessons that our word matters to God. Jesus said it like this, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Don't lie to the Holy Spirit. Don't lie. Don't, don't say one thing with your mouth in front of others to look spiritual when really in reality, it's not really what's really happening. Does it make sense? The, the second thing we learn is that living with a healthy fear of God matters. And I know we don't like to talk about the fear of God, right? And I, and I understand that, that because we live in this season of grace, that it's, it's hard to talk about stories like this because we're like, how could God, if he is so grace-filled, how could he do this? Well, first of all, you, you got to understand God and death because, and that's another, that's a totally another message, but God doesn't view death the way that we view death. First of all, his timeline is not our timeline and so forth, but Living with a healthy fear of God, I think, matters. Now, they created this crisis for themselves, and many times we create our crises through what we do, right? I mean, we make decisions, we do what we want to do, and then something happens. In other words, we get in our, over our head financially. We rush to marry someone. We <clears throat> rush into a business deal. We rush into um, moving across the country or moving to do this or that. And, and we find ourselves in a mess. We didn't pray. We didn't ask the Lord. We just did it. And many times it creates crisis in our lives and, and we pay for that. There are times, and then we want to blame God for it. I think, I think we take the grace of God many times for granted. We take his mercy for granted. Maybe that's you today. Maybe you are taking God's grace. You're taking what he has given you, me. And we're just kind of going, yeah, yeah, God's grace, you know, whatever. And I think that's what Ananias and Sapphira were doing. They were just like, yeah, we're, you know, this is, yeah, this is full price because they wanted to make themselves look good. When in reality, they were taking advantage of God's grace. So maybe we need to repent today of our complacency. Maybe we need to repent today of our greed. Maybe we need to repent of sin today. So many times we cause our own challenges and, it, and it's, not, it's not that we can't make mistakes, right? It's not that we, we're not gonna sin but through this story, here's, here's, I think, what we learn. I think we find a healthy fear of God that is good for us. In other words, just because of what Jesus has done on the cross and because of the grace and the forgiveness, it doesn't mean we can just do what we want to do. And we learn this lesson in Ananias and Sapphira. They created the crisis on their own. They lied. They trampled on the grace of God and they took it for granted. And I think many times it's easy to judge them, right? It's easy to go, man, why did they do that? That's crazy. They got what they deserved. Well, many times in our lives, we go through and walk through challenges that we have created and our word matters to God. And I think a healthy fear of God matters. Now, the second story is, is number two, the challenges we create in our relationship with others. Now, this is an interesting story as well because it involves the Apostle Paul, who we all esteem, right? Paul is one of the greatest heroes of our faith, obviously, besides Jesus or Peter or, you know, one of the other disciples. But the challenges that we create in our relationship with others. Now, we just learned about the challenges that we can create in our relationship with God. The, the sin in our lives, the greed in our lives, the complacency, the taking his grace for granted. And I warn us of that. But the, the second is this relationship that we have with our neighbor. And Paul and Barnabas are gonna walk through some challenges in their relationship. And it's, and it's challenges that they caused themselves. Acts chapter 15, we'll pick up the story in verse 36. After some time, Paul said to Barnabas, 
Let's go back and visit each city where we previously preached. You know, Paul and Barnabas were partners. I mean, they were tight. They, they traveled that, the then area of the world, that, that Israel, uh, modern day Turkey, Greece, that area. They traveled starting churches, preaching the gospel. He said, let's go visit the cities where we previously preached the word of the Lord to see how the new believers are doing. Barnabas agreed, said, yeah, it's a great idea and wanted to take along John Mark. But Paul disagreed strongly since John Mark had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in their works. In other words, he ticked Paul off. You ever happened to you, right? Their disagreement, listen to this, was so sharp that they separated. Barnabas took John Mark with him and sailed for Cyprus. Paul chose Silas. And as he left, the believers entrusted him to the Lord's gracious care. I know it sounds trivial, right? It's like, oh, they couldn't just agree to disagree. They couldn't just say, okay, yeah, we'll take John Mark. Let's see how it goes. Or, okay, John Mark, you're going to stay here for this one. No, 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 no. It was so sharp. And this was a relational challenge that they created themselves. So what do we learn from this? The first thing we learn is that our stubbornness can cause great relational difficulty. I mean, this is the bottom line. They were just both stubborn. They, they just decided, <laughs> you know what? No, nah, I'm digging in my heels. I am not going to allow you to tell me what to do or who I can take with us. You, and I, I don't know if, if they got into each other's face and pointed fingers and says, Paul, I'm sick of this. You are a type A personality. You think you're the boss of me and I am sick of this. We're taking John Mark and that's the final story. I'm not being gonna, gonna be pushed around by you anymore. Listen, I used to work for a Paul and I love him dearly, but man, there were times in which I would just bite my tongue. I was like, oh, and then Paul on the other side, stubborn. I mean, couldn't you add or throw in just a little bit of grace? Say, hey, last time, man, I'm just telling you that he's an added expense to this trip. Um, he left us last time, which cost us money because we had to pay for his trip back. I'm making some of this up, but I'm you know, hearing this conversation between Paul and Marvis. Paul's just like, it's not a good idea to take him. It doesn't make logical sense. He is, he's not ready for this kind of ministry. We need somebody mature. I need a staff member that is ready to go. You know, those types of conversations. Paul on the other side, he's stubborn. They're both stubborn. They're digging in their hills. And, and here's a question about stubbornness. What is the root of stubbornness? Because some of you are very stubborn, very stubborn. And you know who I'm talking about. Don't look at your husband. I'm talking to you right? We all have a little bit of this, but some of us, we really do struggle. But what's, what's the root of this? Anger. Um, Paul, he was angry that John Mark left and it left a mark in his mind. In his mind, it left a mark. He was like, you know what? I don't trust that guy. He is not ready and not fit for ministry. Barnabas, he had been probably building up this pent up anger towards Paul and his, and his type A personality. And he was sick of it. Hurt. A lot of times hurt causes us to become stubborn. And we just say things like, I will never allow them to do that to me again. We dig our, dig, dig our heels in, in relationships this way because we're angry or because we're hurt, or, or maybe it's just pride. And that leads us to the second thing that we learn here is our stubbornness can cause great relational difficulty, but pride can cause unnecessary relational pain and separation. So Paul and Barnabas would never travel again, that we know of, they would never travel again together. So the, the, the bottom line is because of their pride, it caused totally, in, in my opinion, totally unnecessary relational pain and separation. And let me, just, let me just ask you a question. Do we allow pride in our relationships? Absolutely. We allow pride. In, and these are things that we create. Again, this whole message is about the challenges that we, that we create on our own. Not because we're following Jesus, 
Now, you know, the James 1, 2 that says, count it all joy when you fall into different trials of many kinds because it's testing your faith. Well, probably that's really in context talking about the way in which we're living for Jesus. We're living on mission and we're going to face trials because of that. It's not really talking about necessarily the trials or the challenges that we create on our own, but we do. And we, we, we create these challenges in our marriages through stubbornness and pride. We create a huge challenge in our relationships, whether that's our marriages, our families, relationship with friends, with coworkers, with neighbors. And here's the bottom line. After some time went by, Paul realized that he was wrong. He realized that, you know what? John Mark, he's proven himself. And in fact, later on in the book of Acts, he says, hey, bring John Mark with you. Here's a great question. What more could Paul and Barnabas could have done together if they would not have allowed stubbornness and pride, if they would not have created the challenge in their relationship, what more could they have done? They, be, they both created this challenge that was unnecessary. And we, let me, let me just tell you, we do the same things. So as we close this series out, can I ask you two questions? Have you ever created a challenge in your relationship with God? And maybe you're in it right now. Have you created right now? Is there something between you and God right now? A, a sin, a secret sin, um, greed, complacency, distraction? Is there a challenge that, that you're in right now that you have created between you and God because of our, let me say we, because of our poor decisions or unwise decisions? And number two, have you become stubborn or prideful in any relationship with others? Is there anything going on this way? And is there anything going on this way in the realm of challenges because of your and my creation? Because we created the mess. Now, because of what God has done for us, let's make it right today. If there's something going on with God, repent. Say, God, I am sorry. I want to, I want to, I want to move to the, to the center of your will for my life. And I need you to forgive me. I've allowed distraction. I've allowed greed. I've allowed sin. I've allowed complacency. I've allowed all these things to come between me and you. And I know I'm not where I need to be with you today. I'm gonna ask you to make that right. And number two, is there something going on with somebody that you need to make right? I, 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 want, I want you to try to make that right. I understand they may not want to, and you can't do anything about that. You can't change anybody. You can't make them you know, forgive you or walk in unity and all that stuff, but you can do your part. And if there's something that you have created, there's a challenge that you've created with somebody in your life, marriage, family, neighbors, friends, coworkers, friends at school, make it right. Now, last thing though, having said all this, right? We talked about Ananias and Sapphira and the challenges that they created in their, in their lives with a lack of fear for God's grace and God's love the challenges that Paul and Barnabas created among, among the, themselves that was so unnecessary and it really did cause a division. Totally unnecessary. They created it on their own. We create those same things. But the last thing today I want you to hear is this. There's good news. Second Timothy. If we are faithful, he remains faithful for he cannot deny who he is. If we are faithful, unfaithful, he remains faithful. I want you to hear that today. That even in our challenges that we have created, 
And why God doesn't strike us dead right now in this time, I don't know. Why the example that we got early in the book of Acts, I'm not sure. But here's what I do know. That even when we're unfaithful, he is faithful. And a few months ago, I came on to a song that is really, I've listened to it over and over as I study even in my home office, I'll turn it on and the whole album, but it's called, There's Another in the Fire. You remember the story of the three Hebrew children and they wouldn't bow to the God that was created. And so they were thrown into this furnace, this crazy big fire. And when the king looks in, the story goes in the book of Daniel, he didn't see three. There's three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but he saw four. And you know who the fourth one was? It was the Lord. And I want you to hear this. God is faithful. God is with you. God is merciful. And he will walk through the fire with you, even if you have created that fire. So as you listen to this song, I want you to repent before the Lord if there's something that you have created, a challenge that you've created with God. And I want you to think about how you're going to make it right with somebody else because it could change everything in your life. It could change everything in their life. There's another in the fire. I want you to, as we sing, as, as they sing, as they lead us in the, I want you to just think and just reflect on the goodness of God that even in the midst of our pain and the challenge that we create in, our, in and of ourselves, he is with us. God, I pray that your word in this whole series, as we talk about a powerful relationship with you, um, a missional worldview because of that power, and then challenges because of that missional worldview. Um, it's not easy. You did not call us to an easy life. You said in this world, you will have trouble. But God, I know that sometimes, I know in my life that I create the challenge. I create the the difficulty. And right now, I just want to thank you that even in my unfaithfulness, even in our unfaithfulness, you are still faithful. Thank you for walking in the fire with us. And right now, we lay our lives before you in in another surrender to you. May we make the challenge with you right May we make the challenges with others right, right now, in this moment as we listen. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.